I've been meaning to make this video for quite some time. I want to talk to you about creating fast and reliable network attached storage that gives you the performance you need and the redundancy or protection that is required of any creator, media professional, or small business. I've been using Synology going on four years now and they've earned my business for life. I recently purchased the DS1817 Plus and upgraded from the DS916 Plus, which I did a review on a couple of years ago. In that upgrade, I got four more disk bays, an additional RAM slot, and the ability to expand using some of Synology's proprietary expansion cards. Right away, I purchased their dual M.2 SSD adapter to increase read-write cache performance on the system itself, but I quickly learned about network limitations and how I would never achieve anything beyond what my network was able to handle. Knowing the DS1870 Plus is capable of much more, I started my research and hit the World Wide Web. Sprinkled in some consulting with my friends uh, that are network professionals, I ended up learning more about about how link aggregation works and how I could push the NAS to perform the way I need it to to edit 4K footage off of it as well. The culmination of my research, I landed at Synology's E10G18-T1 single port high speed 10 gigabit add-in card for their NAS servers. They also have a T2, uh, that is a dual port card if you need more than one port. The single port is good enough for me and my setup at this time. If I ever wanted to expand it, I could just get a 10 gigabit switch and go that way if I wanted to. I also picked up a long 10 gigabit ethernet cable to directly attach the DS1817 Plus to my iMac Pro. Before we go any further, I wanna talk about the things you'll need if you wanna copy my setup in your home build. You'll need a 10 gigabit capable PC or Mac, it really doesn't matter. In my case, I have the iMac Pro. The Mac Mini is also configurable with a 10 gigabit port. You can also purchase a Thunderbolt 3 10 gigabit adapter from Sonnen or something like that if you wanna connect any other capable or Thunderbolt 3 enabled Mac uh, system. So a, a MacBook Pro or something like that. You'll need a T1 add-in card, uh, compatible Synology NAS. I'll link the support page in the description if you wanna hit which uh, NAS are uh, compatible with this add-in card, cause there's quite a few of them. So if you've purchased a Synology NAS in say the last year or so, more than likely if you got it in the mid tier, it's gonna be compatible with the add-in card, at least the T1 that is. Next, you'll need at least one SATA SSD. It is preferable that you have two so you can enable the read-write caching capability of your disk station. With only one drive, you'll only be giving your performance a read boost. Uh, you won't be able to take advantage of the writing capability. I'm using two 960 gigabyte Kingston UV500 SSDs in this build. I found that they're really reliable and they come at an affordable price. Next, you'll need a long uh, 10 gigabit ethernet cable long enough to reach where your workstation is going to be and where you're going to be putting your disk station if your house isn't wired for it or whatnot. You may need more RAM as well. Uh, you'll be able to hit storage manager in DSM and check uh, the SSD cache advisor to see the recommended amount of RAM you'll need for your setup after you install your SSDs. This will allow you to maximize your system's performance. Getting right into it, I started the upgrade process um, by making sure that I had a backup of all my critical data. This is the most important step. If you mess something up, you wanna make sure that you have a backup. Then power down the whatever NAS system you have. And in my case, I have the DS1870 Plus, and then I took out all of the drives. Then I unhooked everything and I took the housing off and replaced the dual M.2 uh, SATA adapter or the SSD caching adapter out and then replaced it with the T1 uh, adapter card. The next thing I did was then mount the two 2.5 inch Kingston UV500 SSDs in the first two slots of my NAS, so bay one and bay two. Synology recommends SSD caching be run through the first two slots on the enclosure. I was nervous about this setup because there were already drives in those slots with my data on them. I had to move the entire array over to, as long as you keep them in order, the disk station will recognize the array and pick up right where it left off with no problem. So previously, disk one will then move to slot three, disk two will move to the four slot and so on. You won't be able to do this if you don't have any free slots on your compatible enclosure. You'll have to completely erase your volume and rebuild it or add a compatible expansion unit. In my case, I have the DX513 expansion bay attached to it. Unfortunately, I, from when I went to the DS916 plus to the 1817 plus, there were four additional bays. So now I have two free bays 
to expand to if I need to in the future. After I did all that, I wired everything back up and powered the enclosure back on. Then I hopped into Disk Station Manager and uh, started the addition of the read-write caching. It'll take a bit and let DSM work its magic, and it worked flawlessly. Next, hit the network control in your DSM, uh, in DSM, the control panel to make sure that you indeed are connected via 10 gigabit connection. In that area, it'll report it as 10,000 megabits uh, connected under that connection. Then you'll wanna make sure the connection is registering in Mac OS. In my case, the cool thing about Mac OS is that it knows that the 10 gigabit connection is the ones that you'll probably wanna use when you're connecting to the drive and it'll push all the data uh, via that connection. In the past couple of months that I've been using this, I've only had to disconnect my Wi-Fi to force the connection once in that whole time. It's a pretty reliable connection. Through this direct connection to my uh, Synology NAS, I am now able to get a sustained 300 to 350 megabytes per second write and up into the 750 to 800 megabytes per second read. Essentially turning my 27 terabytes of storage into high performance secure storage. It's a lovely thing and in contrast to other 10 gigabit connections uh, solutions out there like you know those things that Linus Tech Tips have built this is a rather affordable option for those of you out there that are small creators like myself small media professionals or running a small business you can absolutely have a collaborative space that's all driven off your Synology NAS at a rather affordable price some of you may be wondering of the noise level of having your uh, Synology NAS in close proximity to your recording environment well I filmed all of this a roll in this room with the Synology NAS not even two feet from me did you hear any of the background noise or low-level humming? Um, I'll let that kind of sit for a sec. You really can't hear anything and it works phenomenally just sitting right there. It's not really loud or anything like that. So to give you an idea of how this will perform in real world instances, I took a 22 gigabyte file from my iMac Pro and transferred it to the Synology and it did it in around a minute and 12 seconds. I took that same file, renamed it and dragged it back onto the iMac Pro and that completed it in about three minutes and four seconds. One thing to note with this though is that the SSD cache will increase its performance over time because it's learning uh, your most frequently accessed files and things like that so hopefully this gave you a better idea of how this will actually well, work for you if you're considering it uh, again all the links that everything that I'm using in this video will be in the description feel free to check those out uh, because uh, if you shop through those uh, they are my affiliate links and they do help out quite a bit as I mentioned already I love this setup and if you already have a t1 or t2 compatible Synology NAS and a Mac or PC that has 10 gigabit capabilities. This upgrade is a no brainer considering the T1 is $140 and the T2 is $270 at the time of this video. Completely and utterly worth it in my opinion. Uh, again, links will all be in the description. Well, that about does it for me in this one. If you like this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I'm Tomas and I will catch you in the next one.